she was the only one. There have been so many people I've killed over the years. But her, she was the only one who ever escaped. She was the one that got away. We shall all rise up this very night and tear down your tower of sin! Has this franchise ever failed in the music department? Like, seriously. Released in 2012 and developed by Eat Sleep Play, came a new reboot-ish sequel to the beloved Twisted Metal franchise, aptly named Twisted Metal. An updated version finally bringing the series into the HD era and then abandoned forever. Like, what's up with that? We have like a hundred Mortal Kombats, but Twisted Metal gets the shaft? Aww. Yep! I don't get it. Because of this, over the last few months, I've taken myself on a journey into the past <laughs> to revisit this series and relive the majesty of these games, like I did all those years ago. And this one, is no exception. Hello everyone, and welcome to the theater. This is Twisted Metal 2012, 11 years later. Object identified. As I'm sure some of you are aware at this point, our usual stop in our journey into the past is to get this thing up and running. And Good Lord! Praise is his name Unto and us. glory his graciousness. Bounty. Trying to emulate this game on my PC, as I've done with this franchise thus far, led me down a time-consuming, troubleshooting hellscape of a process that would be best described as... Shite! I was able to get the game running, but unfortunately any attempt I would make to try to increase the abysmal frame rate would more often than not lead to the game just breaking entirely. So anyway, in the midst of my despair, I came to the unfortunate realization that I would have to resurrect this beast the old-fashioned way. Oh, wow! A nice old-fashioned! Staring down the barrel of a couple hundred dollar purchase, on top of having to postpone this until I could get a PS3 and a copy of the game, I was shocked to discover a co-worker of mine, my good friend Rocky, had a PlayStation he was willing to let me borrow, which was a solution I was overjoyed with, because all that troubleshooting wore me out. Good looking out, man. The one true God. I shall on this day circumcise the flesh of my penis. With all the problems now out of the way, it was time to finally boot this beast up and dive into the last and latest in the franchise. And I'm already digging the menu. Unlike other games in the series, this Twisted Metal has a completely new setup to its tournament-style gameplay and storytelling. What? Gone are the days of scrolling through a large pool of characters and remaining confined to their style of vehicle for the duration of the tournament. Here, the story is split between only three characters, sort of piggybacking off the previous as you complete each of their stories spread across three separate tournaments. You can have multiple cars for the same driver. It's weird. It's an urban legend that never happened. Anywho, it's Sweet Tooth or Nothing. This is The Fate of Sweet Tooth the Clown. Finding our psychopathic cloud of chaos reminiscing on his kills of the past, we discover his reasoning for joining this year's tournament, his murderous intent for the one who got away. When I win, he's going to send me where she's been hiding. Honestly, this is a little dumb. <laughs> Of all things, that and any prize I ask for will be mine. Exactly. Whatever. We've got our launching point for the story to come. 
Am I tripping balls, or did she stab him in the other eye? And you look like Adam Sandler. We got you. This game. Time to pick our three cars and get this show on the road. Death Warrant looks like Frankenstein from Death Race, and I love it. Level 1. Sun Springs, California. Our first stop in the contest, and another quaint suburban setting. Oh god. These intros with Calypso explaining the setup are pretty cool. To win and advance to the next event, simply destroy all other contestants. Definitely better than nothing. Starting off, the overall increase in quality this game provides is immediately apparent. You're fired. Missiles and explosions flying everywhere. The level of destruction is fantastic and really locks you into the action from the get-go. I accidentally shot my special into this guy's living room and I was shocked by the result. Buy another one, you rich mother With the simple objective of eliminating six enemies, our tournament began with a standard approach of last man standing. Honor to the end. A great decision allowing me to get a grip on these new controls, which are so much better. It took me a few levels to really get a hang of things, but this is by far the best I've seen. Oh, tight, 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 yeah. Doing everything I could to get a lay of the land without being gangbanged, I spotted a weak roadkill and made our first dent on the scoreboard. Giving Warthog some ramming machine gun damage, I collected a machine gun upgrade, taking both our guns and ramming to the next level. Woo, you know you did. Making my escape, Road Boat, whoever, whoever that is, gets in my way, allowing for one of the most satisfying rammings I've done in like any of these games. Well, until Junkyard Dog throws a car at us. What the hell was that? Basically forcing us into the garage to make our first car swap. That'll do. Now with some hefty speed on our side, I went back for Junkyard Dog and easily removed him from the battlefield, halving our enemy count and laying the precedent for things to come. Just gotta switch my car again. Just two enemies left, I was stunned by my twin. So, <laughs> this is basically a mop up. Like, it seems Death Warrant has a death warrant. Doesn't matter. Your time's up. Victory. Did that go the way you thought it was gonna go? Nope. Level two Black Rock Stadium. The obvious update to the original's arena level that is just too perfect for this game. The Trap Riddle Battle Stadium definitely ups the lethal possibilities. Arena. Death Stadium. I'm actually quite proud of it. Hi. Beginning battle, delivering a quick special and homing missile to Kamikaze. It took me a hot minute to separate myself from the madness and get my bearings. This place is crazy. The seemingly random attacks coming from everywhere on this shifting hell arena had me struggling to focus in on one contestant, resulting in our first kill coming as a bit of a surprise. <laughs> the same could be said about Shadow. Kind of died. Pardon the expression, but it's what we call the suck. Yep. You're getting the suck from the cars in front of you, and it's sucking you up. It really wasn't until I found Axel that I was able to lock in on someone and beat them into submission. A one-on-one -on -one fight. <laughs> Tried to get away, but not today. When a guy's banging you, you don't you spin off of him. Those are the worst defenders to play against, actually, because if you can feel their body, uh... come on. With three enemies remaining, I swapped the slow ice cream truck for our much faster alternative at the garage. Now able to absolutely haul ass around the arena and deal pain efficiently, for the most part was a mop-up, and a conclusion that carried my confidence into level 3. Oh, and we got a bike. Level 3. Metro Square. And my confidence is gone. Just to shake things up a bit. What a bunch of fucking bullshit. 
faced with our first objective-based level of the tournament, the feeling of having any control of the situation seemed to vanish as the unpredictability of this game went from classic to a new style of battle. But I'm not used to it. You have no power here. Confined to wage war within this electric cage, its changing location gives you a timed window to keep up, all while attempting to eliminate the competition as usual. It's like shifting King of the Hill. I don't know. Great! As if our return to New York wouldn't be an anxiety-filled nightmare. Nobody leaves until we work this out. Cage match. Welcome back! Doing fucking everything I could to wipe the cobwebs off my performance and keep up with the mayhem. The unpredictability of the movement of the cage, combined with my awful vehicle choice, was like a massive wet blanket on my first attempt at this mission. Oh my god. Now where am I? Rotating through our available vehicles. Like, all of them. I seem to have more success with Death Warrant. Or so I thought. But it really wasn't until I was able to memorize the locations of the shifting cage that made more of a difference. Especially this upper ice rink area that isn't the easiest to get to. Or find. This was like the bane of my existence the first five times I tried this level. I thought it was like a vehicle issue, but it turns out if you kind of jump the gun on the cage switch, it doesn't really matter what you're driving. This had me on the ropes. But the old equation still holds up. Remembering the layout and drops equal domination. So let it be written. was a humbling level, and just the thing to continue our story. I could sense where she was. Filling us in on the backstory of Sweet Tooth's aggressive hunt for the one who got away, we discover he was once a happy ice cream truck driver, who apparently just went insane. One night I called, and he answered. Just say no! <laughs> beginning a killing spree that started with his own family. The perfect family. I chose his family. For some reason, I remember the girl that got away being his wife. Hey, little girl, you can't hide from daddy. But I guess not. This honestly felt like the same information, but we learned that, so. Progress. Level four, Watkins Harbor. Set in the thick smog of an industrial district, the traditional deathmatch setup is once again added to with the introduction of the Juggernaut, a massive armored truck that annoyingly spawns enemies to the battlefield until it's destroyed. An objective that only I have to worry about. Well. Trying to locate our semi-friend and avoid literally everything that's being launched my way. I found him heading through this drainage system, but was unable to deal any real damage before getting shocked and losing him in the mayhem. Spending far too much time just dicking around. Before I knew it, the enemy count had doubled, and the urgency to put this guy down doubled with him. Grabbing a health and noticing he's about to spot another enemy, I went head on with his bombs and did my best to, like, do anything. Surprisingly, I don't, I don't know, I was able to stall him out, I guess. You are terminated. I was actually kind of shocked that I stalled him out and ended this with a very classic six enemies remaining. It's deathmatch time. I need a new ride, though. It may have taken only four levels, but this car is so much better than Sweet Tooth's ice cream truck. It's not even funny. I'm going fast again! <laughs> I swear, the tight controls feel like Need for Speed and Twisted Metal had a baby, and I love everything about it. Turns out, it also helps greatly in the elimination of these fools. Definitely gonna use this more often. 
And it's a good thing I came to this conclusion, because our next level is gonna need it. Ah! Fuck my ass. This is going to be so much fun. Level 5, Diablo Pass. Seriously, can we pass this one? I've equipped every vehicle with a bomb. Meaning... A twisted combination of deathmatch and sprint. Tasking the player to trigger their car bomb at the halfway point and be the first back to set them off. And blow everyone else to hell. A cool idea that is incredibly nerve-wracking and an event that I've dreaded since starting this game. This guy gets it. Taking off against 12 enemy vehicles, I unloaded my entire payload trying to claw my way through the ranks, which was initially easier said than done. Oh, nope, there's 14 of us. And 12 gates. Dead last, all right. This was honestly garbage in the beginning. On a side note though, it was pretty sweet to literally see Sweet Tooth just running the race. You're never gonna catch me. That's cool. Duking it out with Darkseid, the halfway point was approaching as we entered a small town. And I'd be lying if I felt my prospects were looking good. Heading back after triggering the bomb, it was clear that Crimson Fury had a massive lead on us. And failure was inevitable. Unfortunately for him, this result gave me a plan. For I have a plan. If you can't beat him, destroy him. Damn it! You're wasting your time. With Kamikaze just out of reach, the stress really began to pile on as I was doing everything to keep things under control. As we got closer and closer to the finish, I was able to make my final attack and place ourselves back in first. A position I had to hold on to until we won. And Axel runs us over. Ah! This was so intense. And just the beginning. Oh, and we've unlocked Roadkill. Not too shabby. Level 6. The Brothers Grimm. The last level for Sweet Tooth and our first, last boss of the game. Returning to the suburbs, it's us versus two monster monster trucks. These things are huge. I don't know what the hell you feed him, but he is too damn big! The loyal gang of Mr. Grimm, a fellow competitor, wants to keep you from your prize. If they kill you next year, one of them gets to enter my contest. So as you can imagine, they're motivated. Now, I understand the reasoning here, these intros are great, by the way. But if Mr. Grimm sent them, and Mr. Grimm is next, if I lose, do I play as them instead? Why would I? Frantically running away from these maniacs, my blood was definitely pumping as I weaved my way around, collecting everything I could find in the process. This was borderline scary at times, as they like blast their horn while trying to run you over. Oh my god! Like I should have died like 18 times here, but it seemed the game took pity on me. I don't believe you. Delivering some real damage to the red one. I gathered some help before giving the yellow one a little love of its own. Eventually, equaling out the playing field, I had the red one on the ropes before dying. Or so I thought. I guess not, but that seemed devastating. With one down, Gillo decides to armor up. Just now. Dragging this battle out. Apparently he's invincible now, so... That's not bullshit. Now he even knows my name! Tasked with planning our passenger friend here, on the underbelly of the beast. It was really picking him back up that proved difficult. And annoying. Let's just say I'm glad I didn't have to redo the whole battle. Because I definitely attempted this more than once. This became laughable when I realized I didn't need to pick him up and could just detonate the charge remotely. What, are you kidding me? Time to redo what we basically had in the bag. Like I said, a cakewalk, honestly. No joke, this ended two minutes ago. 
Initiating storm protocol. It was fun to watch them die that way. But now, tonight, it all comes to an end. Tonight, I finally get my special treat. With the contest now over, Sweet Tooth travels to Calypso's tower, longing to receive his wish and locate the one who got away. Take me to him now! Unfortunately, asking to be sent to her was a massive mistake because she's dead. Aww. She apparently died some time ago. This feels like it was ripped right out of a Twilight Zone episode, and I'm okay with it. But I can't say I was blown away with the conclusion. She's been dead for 10 years. Honestly, the helicopter we got for beating the last mission was a bigger ask than our wish. Am I right or am I right or am I right? The bar was pretty low on that one. Right, right, right. Leaving Sweet Tooth to his tragic fate, our story moves forward with the introduction of our next main character, Mr. Grimm. My name is Daniel Grimm, and I'm an asshole. Okay. This is Mr. Grimm's Dark Trip Back. Witnessing his father's death as a child and living a life of grief and pain, he blames that day as a turning point in his life and the main source of his pain. What if I could go back and warn you? And I think you can see where this is going. It doesn't take a genius to figure how it all worked out. Return to the past and save his father. I'm getting real outlaw vibes. Level one, Diesel City. Shaking things up a bit, our first level skips the standard deathmatch approach in place for another round with the Juggernaut. Of course. And wouldn't you know it, there's two of them. Boy, two Juggernauts before they flood the city with enemies. Because why not? Set in another Gotham-style city, our freeway hunt began. Wasting zero time, I was eventually able to get out in front of one and face the unstoppable. Head on. We'll put that name to the test. Alrighty, discovering my attempts to do damage came at a dramatic cost. I switched over to something new and took this party airborne. This is the coolest thing ever. And I love it! I know when I played through Black, I gave Warhawk a lot of shit for using a helicopter. But I gotta say, sitting in the driver's seat, I totally get it. It's super fun. This also begs the question, why isn't this Warhawk? That would have been way cooler. You're in violation of this town city <laughs> Anywho, now able to easily keep up with these beasts, I patiently reined my air superiority upon them, whittling them down with surprising ease. Had to get a few health, but being able to locate them quickly using this thing outweighed its low armor. It's also incredible at eliminating the remaining opponents, even eight of them, starting with Robo Sweet Tooth. I apologize for nothing! Systematically hunting each of them down, the use of the heli's side turret and magnet added greatly to the fun. This whole experience feels like cheesing, and I love it. Ever flown through a parking garage? Done deal. That was a good mission. I had a good time. Level 2. Sun Springs, California. Again. This time, enclosed in a smaller section of the map, surrounding a theater. Lots of enemies in a really tiny space. It's close quarters combat. Almost immediately going head-on with roadkill and delivering some massive damage. It's very obvious how the close proximity has increased the mayhem. If this was real life, these tournaments would last 10 seconds. That was awesome. <laughs> Trying to get away, I cut through the theater, searching the area for as many pickups as I could find. And although this proved successful, my health had taken a hit, and the absolute panic to switch my car was all too real. I cannot believe I pulled that off. Let's go with Roadboat. Still, yet to make a dent on the board, it didn't take long for that to change with the elimination of Junkyard Dog. And soon after, Meat Wagon. 
goodbye. With six enemies left, the brawl continued, duking it out left and right, waging complete vehicular warfare, kicking off the true start to our slaughter. So much fun. Good times. Level 3. Thrills and Spills Adventure Park. The return of the electric cage event. But this time, in a theme park. You ready to ride the ride and shrill to the thrill, spills, and chills? I cannot believe I beat this in one try. This level is a maze, and similar to the ice rink from before. The cage eventually moves to this upper level that I somehow found. I cannot say the minimap helps me know where I am at all. It, it means go up to the right, bear right, over the bridge, and hook up with 307. Make a right Maybe it's turn. a shortcut, Dwight. It said go to the right. It can't mean that. Successfully navigating my way around, somehow, I laid into everyone I could see, all while trying to maintain my health and stay within the cage. Man, do I mean try. Because with just Robo remaining, he like launches me out of the cage, which now hurts me because my grace period expired situation went from under control to panic attack in the span of 20 seconds. I won by the skin of my teeth. Thank God. And lucky for us and my heart rate. Uh. It's intermission time. So hurry, hurry, hurry. Step right over to our refreshment center. What the hell is this stuff? Gasoline. And now, on with the show. Reaching the middle of our story, we're greeted with a pretty awesome display of artifacts from previous tournaments. So many good times. Unfortunately for us, that's like the only thing we get that's cool in this. Because just cutting to the preacher, cursing his tower outside, and then nothing is super random, and I don't think it advanced the story at all. What did that have to do with Mr. Grimm? I'm not worried about it! I'm not worried about any of this! This had me confused as hell going from the original games to what this one presents, but I guess it's a good time to talk about this game's attempt at a plot. Apparently, each one of the main characters is like a faction leader, comprised of other contestants in the tournament. The clowns, the dolls, the skulls. Oh, and I almost forgot. Our last player. Meet. The Preacher. Oh. Leader of the Holy Men. Emissary of the Gorgonites. This world's fucking... <laughs> this was a decision apparently made by the studio to focus on Sweet Tooth, Dollface, and Mr. Grimm. But I argue they didn't do a very good job, because I am super confused and have like a hundred questions. I don't get it. Like, if the Preacher is a leader, why is he not technically a main character like the rest? If this faction thing exists, why do I have to look it up on the wiki to find out about it? I swear, the deeper I get into this game's storytelling, the more I fantasize about Black. He giveth and he taketh away. Why they go and do that? This game's combat is amazing, but the rest feels so undercooked. It's fucking love. Level 4. Watkins Harbor. This may be the same smog-filled hellhole as before. This time around, Calypso has something new for us. The Endurance Challenge. The enemies, motivated gang members of fellow contestants, just keep coming. Take one out, another appears. Reach the kill limit to win. With eight enemies marked for destruction, I indiscriminately distribute damage to everyone I could see, successfully laying into a few of them before having to go get my first health. It's funny, the first time I tried to use this roaming truck health thing, it closed on me. Like at the last moment. What a fucking asshole. Focusing all my energy on dark side, we had a sort of reverse duel situation going harassing her under the scoreboard. Once again, low on health after being run over by Axel. Twice. I grabbed one before using it all up, destroying me wet. Managing to drive through Crimson Fury and deliver some missile payload to Roadkill. We were now halfway through Calypso's new game. <laughs> Remembering I could switch vehicles, I took a turn with Talon again. With just one enemy left, apparently Darkseid version 2 won't die. Then it's back to the garage to finish this thing off with Roadboat. Well, that was fun. Who's for 
Chinese. 14 minutes. That's like a minute and 45 seconds per kill. Not too shabby. <laughs> Based off nothing. Level 5. Sun Springs again. <laughs> and it's a race. Give me cancer now, guys! It's time for my second least favorite level of the game. It's a nice town, don't you think? But not for long! Racing through the suburban streets of Sun Springs, we're tasked with being one of the first contestants to reach the end and be awarded with a twisted prize. This level is and was absolute garbage. With seemingly a thousand more things on screen, a mini-map that does ask to imply future checkpoints, and an open-ended layout, I was fucking blown away. It only took me two attempts to beat this. I literally squeaked by at the very end on my second attempt. And everything leading up to that point had me thinking I was fucked. Don't know. <laughs> I don't want to question these things. The Twisted Metal slash Racing Gods have blessed me here, and I'm just, like, gonna let it be. But discovering Calypso's Twisted Prize translates to a deathmatch. We're shocked. You and I and everyone else in the world were shocked. <laughs> Leaving just three pathetic enemies away from victory. Goodbye. Outlaw gets absolutely destroyed here. This is like by far the most Final Destination kill I've ever seen. Tamikaze, not so much. That whole thing went better than expected. Oh my god, I forgot about this. <laughs> Yep, level six, Iron Maiden. Well, we've made it to the last level of this year's tournament. The final challenge keeping us from Mr. Grimm's wish to go back and save his father. And unfortunately for him, Dollface has a way better faction boss than his twin monster truck brothers. As you can see. You have this thing and you care about modeling? Get the fuck out of here. She needs to sort out her priorities. Tasked to do battle with three lemos before being able to use this scud launcher to attack Dollface's giant robot. The obvious challenge increase between this and the last is obvious, and I'd be lying if I wasn't feeling a bit overwhelmed. Nani? Tracking down our first limo friend, I was happy to see they don't take much to destroy, but Dollface was quick to show me. Either do I. Eventually able to deal enough damage to capture the faction leader and drag her behind my car. I managed to bring her somehow not lifeless body over to the scud launcher, which has a furnace grinder thing in the back. What? <laughs> I threw her in, initiating the launch sequence that puts me in control of one of the scud missiles. A missile that happened to be the exact same speed as the robot. Which isn't annoying. At all. Six and a half hours later. Unfortunately, failing to knock down her shields, just apparently pissed her off, and the whole rigmarole had to be done over. Trying to focus on just the leader's limo to speed this BS up. I believe it actually helped things when the scud launcher started moving around on the last missile launch. Is it cold in here? With her shield disrupted, but now surrounded with flying doll heads that come out of her mouth, the extent to where this game was willing to take things had me on the edge of my seat as we went into another stage of battle. Drive around and shoot at her balls. Ugh, yep, she does a spin thing, oh. And that's not it. Why would it be? Now it's time to do what we just did, but inside a cage. I see what you're doing here, Calypso, and I don't like it. Okay, this boss fight is so dragged out. It's like the Indian in the cupboard of boss fights. Just throw everything in there. To hell with the consequences. Without a doubt, I must have retried this level like seven times trying to take down what remains of her health. Just to fall victim to the restraints of her cage. I think my only saving grace was that I didn't have to replay everything. Because that would have been it for me. Eventually, whittling her down enough to initiate the next cutscene, Dollface in this level again refused to die, sending us into stage 512 of this level. And would you believe it? There's another one after it. What the fuck is happening? Now fighting nothing but a floating head, 
This cheeky callback to Darktooth did little to impress me as this level had far outstayed its welcome, and the destruction of this took center stage in my mind. At this point, I had like tunnel vision to complete this level. I never want to do that again. That's how much I enjoy that. Now it's wish time. Let's see if he can do the impossible. Somehow, ramming into Calypso's 100th floor office, our tournament of confusion with Mr. Grimm had come to an end. Visiting Calypso for his prize to go back and save his father. Hell of an entrance. And just like that, it happened. Your wish is granted. Transported back to the night of his father's death, Calypso continues his dickish ways and just plops us in the backseat of our father's car an hour before his stunt. He's not even close to dead yet, man. <laughs> as you can imagine, this whole thing goes to hell as a struggle breaks out, killing his father even sooner and leaving himself wounded on the street. Oh, and <laughs> then we get the outlaw treatment. I fucking called it. I'm convinced that this is just Sweet Tooth's wish from this game mixed with outlaws from Black. It's all right. What's weird to think about is because he was killed by his younger version of himself, he will technically relive this over and over and over again. Like killing himself only to grow up, enter the tournament, and then do it again. If they ever made a sequel, him discovering this and trying to break the cycle would be a cool angle. But who knows? It's only been a decade. There's still hope. Let's see if he can do the impossible. Now, moving things along, we meet our lead for the last leg of our journey. Christus Sparks an aspiring supermodel who will stop at nothing to become the greatest of all time. I'm the prettiest one. They all know that. After an unfortunate car accident that threatens her career, Miss Sparks, it's a tiny scar. Krista seeks the treatment of an unsavory doctor who could find her in a doll mask. But now the mask, it won't come off. But when I win this contest, Calypso will help me. Calypso will set me free. This, this still feels like black. I'm just saying, it's a good thing they took the time to flush out these stories. It's paying off. But that's okay. It just makes me want to work harder. This is the madness of Dollface. Good Krista. Level 1, Black Rock Stadium. Returning to Calypso's death arena, this time for an endurance challenge, it appears that while we were gone, Calypso lavished up the place and added new, deadly features, including a lava pit and a spike rope, which I definitely didn't get the timing of. Make me out there. With eight enemies to defeat and failing miserably on my first attempt, my second came with an increased level of confidence. By this point, I had like become one with the controls and me and Frankenstein here were burning the village in no time, starting with the law. Just kidding. Give that over to the townsfolk. I don't know where these references are going. <laughs> this actually happened more than once. I would like weaken one of these guys and someone else would destroy them off screen. And then it would count for me. I'm not complaining. It's just a weird improvement over the gang up mentality of the previous. I'm getting like help here. So, a win without trying is still a win. And now I know why. Level 2, Diablo Pass. Juggernaut Edition 2.0. Presented with two upgraded Juggernauts, combining with the death curves of this canyon road. It may very well make this event unbeatable. It's funny, these levels continue to like escalate things, even though it's supposed to be a completely new tournament. Same prize, but double the fucking risk. What? I mean, like, even Calypso's breakdown intros are more patronizing. I'm sure you'll let me know if that's the case. Beginning my crusade against these big rig monsters. I'd say about a whopping minute and a half went by before realizing the extent of this tall task ahead of me. Attempt after attempt, it was becoming clear this one's gonna take some planning. And a well-needed upgrade on our part. Time to fight fire with fire. Yes! My reoccupation of this glorious rig after our escapades through the original felt like a dream. Ending both juggernauts in an avengeful amount of time.
I think I found my new favorite vehicle. The absolute power you have over the enemy is like lethargic and must be praised. What a fantastic solution to an overwhelming level. Level 3, L.A. Skyline. Swapping New York for the OG skylines of L.A., our next patronizing level came in the form of a rooftop endurance match. I'd hate to see anything happen to that beautiful face of yours. Surprise, surprise. <laughs> With only eight enemies to eliminate, Operation Don't Fall Off began. Oh, and the first one killed by someone else. Collecting some health in the center of this dish thing, Axel dared to confront us, making for our first kill on the scoreboard. Ugh. Oh my god! Okay. Okay. Trying to remain on just one rooftop to avoid any accidents, the battlefield quickly filled with enemies as my domination set in, both physically and mentally. This is why we remain on one rooftop shadow. Unless you're like me, I can do it. I need to swap vehicles. Entering the garage and realizing I'm an idiot, I did what I should have done from the very beginning and took this mayhem back to the skies. Raining hell on the enemy and arguably sidestepping the entire premise of this level. This was an absolute slaughtering. delivering us to the middle of our story. I had worked so hard. Taken back to the beginning of her torment, we discover some more details on the backstory of her doll face predicament. After her accident and refusal to accept a rather small scar on her face, she murders her doctor in a blind rage, seeking other means to fix her problem. Because when you believe in your dream, there's always a way. Locating a known blind back alley surgeon the whole package. <laughs> what choice did I have? Clearly. Being prescribed just six days in this mask to cure her affliction, it seems Krista's problems were finally coming to an end. Yet, it was not to be. Returning a week later to find his office no longer there, which I gotta say is like my favorite part of this story. I'm sorry, I have no listing for a Dr. Ospelic, is it? At that address or any other? No. I know he was here. Getting like major goosebump vibes with like a touch of the machinist or something. It's a weird combo. <laughs> Ivan, the guy from the swing shift. There is no Ivan at National Machine, Risen. This is cool, but who could possibly be this dumb? They all want to be me. Actually, they might have nailed it. You're a damaged goods lady. Level 4, Metro Square. Heading back to the safe streets of New York, this turn at Metro Square brings with it a whole new battle challenge. A challenge that is hilariously built for this franchise. Or for me. I've told all other drivers to only target you. It's almost ironic, really. The so-called Fight for Your Life edition that brings the gangbang mentality of practically all the previous games into its very own game type. Have I mentioned that Calypso is a patronizing prick? You wanted attention, doll face? Well, now you've got it. Enjoy. Facing a whopping 14 enemies, all by myself, the test of my accumulated deathmatch skills were about to be tested. Alright. Getting continuously rammed and ran over by everyone, my run and gun tactics were on prime display, trying to make any sort of dent to the enemy numbers. After like three minutes of doing what I could with Death Warrant, I switched her out for Dark Side delivering our first win on the scoreboard. Wow. And someone else died too. Wow. So I guess when these guys are actually programmed to focus on me, they don't. Why am I surprised? 
throwing Shadow around like a ragdoll. Our enemy count fell to 11, continuing the respectable precedent established with Darkseid. Yet, unfortunately, being robbed of health had us limping our way back over to the garage to give Death Warrant another run at things. This, as before, was not as fruitful. I don't know what it is, but Axel just loves to run me over in this thing. Escalating things to a more vertical level, I moved on to Talon. Which worked out great as it crashed my game. Are you fucking kidding me? And forced me to start this entire fucking thing over again. We're gonna do. Interestingly enough, on my second attempt at this clusterfuck, I took things underground to a subway and managed to make even quicker work of the enemy. I didn't even have to change vehicles. It's like the pathfinding broke or something, because I was able to basically take each of them on one at a time down here. I can't say things weren't a little hectic. I had to get a few healths, but the strategy proved useful and almost made up for the crash I had to endure. Level 5, Diesel City, but it's another race. Ugh. Bear witness, everyone, to by far the worst level in this game. The one level I was dreading the most, and the single greatest example of utter mayhem this franchise has ever delivered. See, I've never actually experienced that sort of atmosphere again before. It's absolutely electric, the passion. Brought back to the hellish ass idea of mixing racing with Twisted Metal, this level takes it up a notch by being flat out the most misleading pile of garbage ever. To be fair, I actually like the racing. It's fun, but if I had any idea where I was going, it was sure as hell put upon me at the very last second. This level feels more like Twisted Metal and Stuntman had a demonic hell spawn bastard of a baby. The demon brought its foul influence upon me. Between basically having no idea where I'm going and all the stunts thrown at me, the bomb concept also makes an appearance. Activated at the finish by hitting a jump off the back of this moving health truck, like, no problem. They don't even tell you where the truck is at the end, and it's unforgivable. Oh, it's up there in the corner. How do I get there? God damn it! I challenge you just to watch this and keep up with where I'm going. This is bad. <laughs> I would basically make it to the end one time and then fuck up in like the beginning on the next. The revolving door, potentially lethal obstacles were aggressively chipping away at my resolve. I cannot explain to you how annoying this experience became. Even when utilizing what I learned from our previous races, like eliminating the leads, which were always Crimson Fury and Kamikaze, I know you're shocked. This race ultimately became less about speed and more about precision. And definitely memorization. I feel like I could make an entire video on how this race will find new ways to fuck you up. Because boy does it. And it's asinine. I really wanted to enjoy this more, because on a basic level, it's a lot of fun. Twist the metal and racing make a cool combo. But the complete lack of knowing where the fuck I'm going turns the fun into frustration, and the whole thing just becomes a chore. I eventually managed, and the winds of fortune blew upon me. But, ugh. Sometimes it may be good, sometimes it may be shit. Level 6. Sweet Tooth's Carnival of Carnage. This absolutely insane monstrosity built by Sweet Tooth's followers after his death sets the stage for the final level of the game. Comprised of multiple floors slash arenas to overcome, spoiler alert, some of them are way easier than others. This game is literally burying me alive. Starting with a ground assault against multiple Sweet Tooth imposters, it was a graceful entry into the last go of things. A true culmination of all I have learned. <laughs> Tasked with destroying this giant Sweet Tooth head flamethrower, its low armor failed it miserably, making it quick work for our minigun and missiles. And within no time, it had become an elevator. <laughs> and took us up to the next stage of battle. Car pinball. Driving around aimlessly, trying to remember what to do, the destruction of another clown head was pretty obvious. But the method in which to do so, not so much. The cannon in the cutscene, like, threw me off. Like, where did that go? And how do I use it? 
Oh, right. I'm the camera. <laughs> Repeating this process two more times, our second challenge gave away to our third, and by far, most annoying, and hilarious, in like, a sadistic way. Allow me to show it to you. Forced to race through this massive network of trap-riddled racetrack, this stage is hilariously unforgiving. It's like being tickled or something. I'm laughing, but I want it to be over. My first real bump in the road came while navigating these swinging flails. Surprisingly difficult and doesn't get any easier trying to rush it. In situations like this, that fact goes against every fiber of my being. This entire stage is a pucker factor. Oh my, what is happening? Taking things on the slow and cautious side helped a bit, but wasn't exactly a bulletproof plan either. After making it past the swinging flails, axes would precede them, which were a lot of fun followed by even more saw blades. I was in heaven. Fuck! I'd make it so far just to get knocked off or killed. This truly was challenging level five for the title of most frustrating. Managing somehow to make it through everything without being catapulted off, I finally made it to the end with a respectable amount of health. And it's a good thing, because I didn't expect these hammer fists almost ruining my day. This contest is bullshit! <laughs> Transitioning to the fourth and apparently final stage in this boss fight. Now all that stands between you and the attention you so rightfully deserve is this metal beast. But is it? These fights never seem to end in this game. Honestly, they don't really feel like bosses, and it's weird. I don't know why. Oh well. Skyward now and faced with another, even bigger, giant sweet tooth head. This massive, ridiculous contraption at times made me feel like I was battling Pennywise. As it, like, lunges at you. Yes. I was having fun, but I don't know, this last stage feels kind of weak. Like, I dare to say that even with the previous stage, the Dollface boss was way harder. For the purposes of this playthrough, I'm relieved, but... This game will amp you up just to put you down, and vice versa. Little Verda! Okay, whoa! Alright, this is in the street now. Here we go! Oh, shoot! Almost! Anyway, delivering the final blow to this impractical nightmare of a vehicle was pretty satisfying. My dumbass apparently missed the Death Star level weakness in the cutscene, because reviewing this footage, I spent like 15 minutes shooting him in the face. <laughs> Whatever works. My motto. Finally, and I mean finally, making it to the end of our last tournament, it appears that Krista is second-guessing her wish to remove the mask. If this mask comes off, even if it worked and I'm beautiful again, I'll just be back where I was. And completely messes the whole thing up. Apparently, not stating the wish clear enough the first time, she, for God knows what reason, breaks it down even more, screwing herself in the process. You put me on the world's biggest runway. You make me the center of attention. And then, baby, you watch me shine. Your wish. Why would you do that? Unfortunately, for her and us having to witness it, Krista gets run over by a plane and dies. An idiot. What a tragic loss of talent. Damn it! Damn you! This wish is the most avoidable thing I've ever seen. She runs down the runway, too. <laughs> this is deserved. Now, this is a decent enough story, I guess, but without a doubt, in my opinion, Black did this far better. Comparing the two, it's not even close. I was a bad girl one time. And now I'm gonna pay for what I did forever and ever and ever. Dollface in Black was someone that you could actually have empathy for. She was forced into a terrible situation for a minor mistake, and at first viewing, it actually seems impractical. It's petty as hell, actually. Like coffee? That's why he did this to me. But later, after beating the contest, you discover the true cost of her victory, and an unexpected conundrum. If I took the key, Mr. Creel was gonna die. Turning the initial impractical punishment on its head in exchange for her freedom. Why couldn't he just have been nice to me? The whole thing feels more like her character. Though, as much as I hate to say it, 
the new one seems more realistic. And the U.S. should help the U.S. or should help South Africa and should help the Iraq and the Asian countries so we will be able to build up our future for our children. Thank you very much, South Carolina. Jesus Christ! Well, everyone, I hope you all enjoyed my super long look in Twisted Metal 2012, 11 years later. This game was an absolute riot to play through, and a perfect example of challenging but not too challenging. For the most part. The battle with the dollface robot and those races are the devil's children, and I can't say I'll miss them. But I didn't feel as hopeless as I have playing through some of the others in the franchise. Just a little patience and map memorization, and it's doable. Unfortunately, I still, even after 11 years, think my least favorite part of this game was the limited characters to actually play as. They say they did it to focus on the stories, and if that's true, they really dropped the ball on that. I can understand a few stinkers when it comes to wishes, but when you have only three and this weird shit with the preacher, seems like an afterthought, honestly, it's just not acceptable, and it's for sure the reason I think this game faded away so quickly. Now, obviously this game made some very impressive improvements in terms of the gameplay that definitely deserve praise. As a whole, this game is extremely fun to play. The controls are tight and responsive, the music kicks ass and fits the mayhem on screen, and the destruction keeps the intensity up, making the entire experience quite the spectacle for the senses. This is a game that did the franchise justice, with just a few mistakes holding it back from standing alongside Twisted Metal 2 and Black, in my opinion. A solid third runner-up in my book, and a major recommendation to any of you curious enough to give it a try. You won't be disappointed. At least with the gameplay. Now, before I wrap things up, as I mentioned in the beginning of the video, I wanted to share my brief thoughts on the Twisted Metal TV show, now that I've watched all 10 episodes. And wow, where do I even begin? Let's just say my first glance of the show on the Peacock app had me concerned from the start, as it was classified as a comedy, which was not a good sign. <laughs> not what I would consider Twisted Metal. Yet here we are, this exists. Anyway, on a basic level, the show was entertaining enough. I kept feeling that the threads that held Twisted Metal to this, Twisted Metal show, were extremely thin and often misused entirely. Sweet Tooth is too goofy in my opinion, and I feel like my assessment of him in the trailer was pretty accurate. He's basically got the personality of the original games and the look of the new, which is weird. Though, I'd be lying if he didn't make me chuckle here and there. And scene. For a Twisted Metal show, the action is very few and far between, and the overall feel of the show seems like a CW one, which isn't great. Some characters are well done, like Twister, but others are made into like a complete mockery. Like Preacher, and worst of all, Mr. Slam. Like, I don't know what the fuck they were smoking when they thought that was a good idea. It's baffling. Honestly, I found myself like mimicking the facial expressions of the quiet character throughout the majority of this. It's like the show at its core is not Twisted Metal, but instead like wearing a Twisted Metal disguise. Like the skin. And it's really noticeable. <laughs> I enjoyed the show for what I expected it to be. And that's unfortunate. But I do not feel that this is the best the franchise has to offer on the big or small screen. Somewhere out there is a dark, gritty, blood-soaked battle fest drenched in heavy metal, and I personally won't be truly satisfied until I see it. I want to thank you guys all for the patience with this video. This was a lot to take on, so I really hope it was worth the wait for you guys. I'd also like to give a very, very special thank you to our patrons. My pals, my amigos! I'm gonna get my gear! You guys are amazing. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Stay tuned for what's next. And as always, thanks for watching.